In South Central Ontario, there lies a large tract of undisturbed wilderness. This landscape of wetlands, pine forests, and rocky outcrops is a perfect backdrop for those seeking an adventurous wilderness experience. That place is Queen Elizabeth II Wildlands Provincial Park. Covering an area of more than 35,000 hectares, this is one massive park. In fact, it is one of the largest and least developed areas south of Algonquin Park. In 2002, these lands obtained provincial park status and the name bestowed upon them is to commemorate Her Majesty's Golden Jubilee visit to Ontario that same year. Due to its non-operating status, this park exists without any visitor facilities or services. There's no main gate, no ranger station, not even a posted sign to let you know you've arrived at the park. In fact, it's very much like a visit to Crown Land. So here we are on the Head River. We're just making our way down from Victoria Lake right now. The water levels are a bit low, but I think that's because of beaver activity in the area. They regulate the water really well, but there is a lot of beaver dams. We've probably crossed about eight on our way up to uh, Victoria Lake. And uh, we're gonna have to make our way over them on our way down too. This is the type of river you'd expect to see moose on. It's very scenic, lots of mud flats and uh, lots of plants. Although it is classed as a natural environment park, it does not mean it is devoid of human influences. The park is crisscrossed by many rough ATV roads, some of which make great portage trails. There are a number of private cabins on leased land within the park, and there are several hunting and fishing camps. Small motorized boats operate out of these fish camps. And the overhead sounds of float planes is not uncommon during the fishing season. But for the adventurous, there are many quiet creeks and rivers, small lakes and trails to explore deep in the interior of this vast park. These lakes get seldom used by canoeists. You can see that other recreational users come here as well. Uh, there's a few hunting camps and a few fishing camps. But other than that, they're really scattered about these small lakes too. There are a few campsites up here. Uh, they are few and far between, but they are pretty beautiful compared to the other sites in the park. I've been really impressed. Lots of nice rocky outcrops, good spots for swimming, and big tall pine trees. It's a great area to explore. The Ganaraska Trail winds its way for about 65 kilometers across the top of the park. Okay, so we're hiking the Ganaraska Hiking Trail. Uh, we're just camped down the lake. We're on Wolf Lake right now, but we're camped on Victoria Lake. And this trail winds its way around Wolf Lake. We picked it up from a small portage between Victoria and Wolf Lake. And it's nicely marked with white uh, trail markers. This section of the trail is called the wilderness section due to its challenging and rugged terrain. Mm -hmm. 
Several established campsites are located along this trail. But to really explore the interior of this park, you need a canoe. But be prepared to blaze new trails. It's always nice to get in that one last paddle of the season. But when the lakes eventually turn to ice, it's a good excuse to strap on a pair of skis or snowshoes and explore the park in its winter glory. Once we got past Sheldon Lake, the Ganaraska Trail showed little sign of any use at all. Uh, snow drifts everywhere, no sign of human activity on it. But to shorten some time and to save some of the rough terrain, we traversed all the lakes of the canoe route that you can do in the summer. Uh, this area is gorgeous in the winter. Absolute spectacular trip. 